there's a new question type inside Canvas New Quizzes. They're called hotspot questions, and they allow for some pretty unique possibilities. So before I show you how to make one, let's see how they work from the student side. So question number one here is ulcerative colitis affects which part of the body, and then click on the affected part. So the student's job is to click somewhere on the image that they think is the right place. And you can see it puts a little target where the student has selected their answer. Um, let's pretend like the student has not studied for this exam. And so they think ulcerative colitis affects the brain. Okay, we're going to quickly submit here. I know I didn't answer the other questions, but let's just move forward. And we can see that I got this question wrong. It identified with my settings, told the student where they clicked and that was incorrect, and then the right answer was here, the large intestine, okay? Had the student clicked inside of this predefined space, they would have got the question correct. Now that we see what it looks like from the student side, let's go make one ourselves. To start, we need to make a new quiz. I'm now going to click on the red Add Quiz button in the upper right. And hotspot questions only work in this new quizzes option. So I need to make sure to check that. They are not available in classic quizzes. It's a new thing. So with new quizzes selected, and I'm going to hit Submit. We'll quickly make a name for our new quiz. And for now, I'm not going to worry about these settings. Next, I'm going to hit the red build option in the lower right hand corner so we can actually get to the work of making our quiz. To add our hotspot question, we just need to click on the blue button in the middle of the screen as a plus sign to add content. That brings up all the question type options inside new quizzes. We get a lot of options to choose from. We want the hotspot questions. That brings up the hotspot question type. We have our title, the question stem. We'll click here to add our image and then some typical question setting items to choose from. Question title is more of like a subheading, so I wouldn't spend too much time here. You can actually even leave it blank. Maybe if you have different sections to your quizzes, you could handle it that way. In the box below is the question stem. This is where you actually ask the students the question. Okay. And then now we need to add in our image. Getting a good image is probably the hardest part about a hotspot question. I've already done the work of looking around and finding a good anatomy image that's not labeled, and I found it in my folders. Click open, and the image loads. Now I need to define the space in the image that is considered correct. You have three options here. We have square, it just draws out squares. You have circle, or oval is what they call it, and it draws out circles and ovals. And then polygon. Polygon is my preferred method because most of the time I want to be a little bit more specific about my zones. So I'm going to choose the polygon option. And then all we need to do is we're just going to click a bunch of times, slowly outlining the space we want to define as being correct. chosen a pretty detailed spot just to illustrate how specific you can get with these hotspot questions. And then you can just double click and that closes off your shape. Again, just double click and that should close off your space. With that, we have our image, we've defined the correct space, and this is ready for students. Before we move on, I will um, emphasize this little information bar here. So if you have students with visual impairments that use a screen reader, hotspot questions are completely inaccessible to them. They, the, their screen reader cannot see the image and explain it to the student, and so they'll not be able to interact with this question type. If you'd like to try out your question, just hit the Done button at the bottom. 
scroll up and you'll see a preview. Clicking on preview jumps you into a student view and now you can act like a student and test out your question. Again, let's see if we click, maybe I'll get it close. So I'm on the small intestine, but I'm near that skinny zone I know that I defined to see if how accurate it is. And submit. And you can see it still got it wrong because I wasn't inside that blue space. Hotspot questions afford a lot of new possibilities for us in assessment. Um, we've already seen the anatomy example. Here's kind of an art drawing example. Students have to troubleshoot this drawing. There's something off about one of these boxes. Which line is causing it to feel off? Um, I've identified it as this line here in the bottom for the students to click on. It should be slanted up more, vanishing toward a vanishing point up here, um, like the rest of the lines there on that face are. Students have to look close and really know their stuff. Um, here's a text example. So this is a screenshot of text. It's a screenshot image of text. It's not truly text. So remember that hotspot questions are not accessible to the visually impaired. So we're, we're sacrificing that and you need to know your students uh, and what they're able to do. So uh, this one just asking them to find a certain illusion in the text. This is from Frankenstein. Students read it, find the illusion, click on it. Uh, maps are, uh, I think, a pretty obvious application of hotspot questions. And then here we have a chemistry example. So uh, again, students really have to know their stuff, look closely and find what is the right answer here. Um, these two options look pretty close, um, but if you really know your stuff, you'll see the difference. Mm -hmm.